All right, guys, this is episode 178 of Shackled City. How's everybody doing out there? Like doing fantabulous. Doing, doing Eight fantabulous. Eight out of whatever the possible option is. A solid five out of seven. Solid five out of seven. It's, it's an oldie, yeah. but it's a goodie. It still checks out. I like it. Uh, feeling like a six out of nine. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, that's that. There's you felt worse. Right? Out of a scale of ten, you could say I'm nine and three quarters. <laughs> well, you could be like Ren, you know, be so. Yeah, I'm like, a, well, I'm like a solid one and a two. So I don't. I guess magical platform. I'm just uh, or a oh, long circle. I got. I got you. Long got circle, you. long cube. It's long cube. I've been seeing Thanks, that man. pop up more and more, by the way. Long. You mean a rectangle? <laughs> yes. I know. Like, and he's, I, I at any every time I see it. <laughs> People say long cube way too often. No, it triggers me. No, so it's not hard. a it's... Dude, it's... <laughs> look, look, see, so you take a cube, right, and stretch it. What happens to it? Long cube. Exactly. That's a There's no rectangle. Name for it, honestly, haters are gonna but say it's a rectangle, to the name but really, it. it's a rhombus. You know what? It's still a rectangle. <laughs> y'all some mouth breathing assholes. <laughs> It's a fucking rectangle. All right, all right. Don't y'all us here. This is very clearly a segregated group. <laughs> y'all are ass breathing mouth holes. Ass breathing mouth holes. What do you mean about you That's people? Right. <laughs> I, I generally mean um, proprietors. I refuse of, to get yelled with them. Proprietors of chicken joints, <laughs> Colonel. That's what I'm generally meaning by y'all in this case. I gotta know though. What what is the secret blend of herbs and spices? Can you tell me, sniper? You don't want to know. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to know. I work there. You don't want to know. Oh no, my my many fears. It's salt, pepper, and obey. And honestly, probably accurate. Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. It's actually nature seasons. <laughs> it's autumn, <laughs> fall. Hey, but what's the secret recipe? You said this comes out what three months out of the year. It's like we just leave it in a little extra longer and put some mustache on it, and you're <laughs> you're good. It's it's pepper, seasoned salt, garlic salt, bit of oregano. Yeah. Okay. And All right. Yeah. Maize and pepper. That's probably about it. And vegans, ground up vegans. There's the secret right there. Now it's out. Everybody knows. Well, cannibalism for the win. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. This is good. So. Oh God, and by good I mean bad. Uh, let's talk about what happened last time. You want to talk about what happened last time? I'd like well, to. Well, folks, get your chains and get your locks for tonight's Shackled Rika. Hey, I'm going to go look at doorknob. I love it. Back. Hey, uh, do me a favor. Um, I'm adjust dead your, inside. Adjust your, your curtain because you look like a silhouette when you lean too far. <laughs> yep, there he is. He's 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 shadow. He's, he's, look, he's I'm, shadow. I'm a Bethesda, I'm a Bethesda okay. player. You, you don't have the, the money from my DLC yet, so you can't see me. Oh, now I'm on law. That's all he has to do. Go in and out of frame. He's like uh, the Crash Bandicoot villains when they're getting introduced. He just slowly shifts into frame. Yeah. Look, look. Is it okay to leave now? Because my insides hurt. Um, <laughs> look, everyone, it's the unannounced Smash Fighter. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby? Xander Darks joins the fight. Yeah. A new enemy has appeared. The Michelin Man has joined the fight. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. The Michelin Man tires on in. Yeah, no joke. So about about that uh, that your curtain there. You wanna you wanna draw that so people can actually. Yeah, I, I guess. I'm being, uh, I'm being fellas, you right. guys do the recap. I will uh, fix the lighting. He acts like he can't walk three feet and just go like this, and it's better. I just fucking asked him to escort all of the, the animals personally to Noah's Ark. What an what an ass. What a fucking ass. Good lord. There's your favorite one donkey on that shit because yeah. they already Clearly. got the Clearly. Clearly. All right. <clears throat> 9.99 to unlock all Hime DLC. Yeah. Every time. So, um, let's talk about it. What uh, what occurred in Last Shackled City? It was kind of a big deal. We had a, we had a fight for the first time in uh, 60 episodes. It was pretty lit. The first time in 60 episodes? That's inaccurate. It, it, it's Yeah, significantly inaccurate, but you get the gist. It's, it's been a while, and then we finally fought. We, uh... Yeah. We slapped blades with uh, with with a uh, big big boy rock being uh, I'm holding on sure. to by Glubby Nubby. I'm pretty sure I've seen that movie before, and I I was uncomfortable all the way through it. <laughs> slapping slapping blades with with Big Daddy Rock and Glubby Nubby, no, no. <laughs> 
You don't support the other uh, browser stream. <laughs> I don't. Not this go around. <laughs> Though I am willing to to facilitate a tabletop game if browsers happens to be listening in. <laughs> that's the that's the content you find on our uh, our only fans. It's a different kind of tabletop. Game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just got to use your own dice. I, I figure that's going to be a lot of sticky sets. Oh, no. You good? You you, you disgust me. <laughs> we uh, we yeah. We I don't fought, feel so good, bud. We fought rocking lemon at. <laughs> It, uh, it went about as expected, uh, ending up with uh, the possession jumping to court, uh, a giant holy spike being shoved into court's neck, uh, Jacob uh, catapulting court almost into the afterlife uh, while also killing Glemenath, and then Glemenath death kneeling and uh, screaming, Yo, turn into stone, and then they all turned into stone because he was very convincing. Yo, can I get yeah, someone to like super to, to recap for me? That's not a full on Chad today, because like <laughs> Doogie Hauser here has just like smoked himself special. And I, I need so that. last episode we went ahead it. and started with Court and Jacob at the uh, Temple of Saren Ray, and along comes Athelsa after speaking with her higher ups in a city far far away because you know she just eats that bitch through the woods pretty much mm. and on coming back Delsa finds Jacob and helps him out of the hole uh, during all this you know Court gets super swole he apparently was uh, chunking down on that protein thanks to Thelsa and once everything is explained and after a short tete-a-tete -tete between Jacob and Thelsa, they all rush over to the Temple of Weejas to see about taking out Rock, because Thelsa had scried and found out that Rock was just destroying the temple that she loves as a way of luring her back. Yes. During all of this, Olheim was super helpful. You know, as he remained motionless and just through most of the scene, well, through most of the scene. Uh, in coming back, we encounter Rock, who at this point is being possessed by a greater wraith, elder wraith, whatever you want to call it. And uh, yeah, shit goes down because apparently Rock's first thought instead of, you know, trying to talk is, you know, Rock smash. And ended up putting Jacob first in line on the casting couch. Not entirely wrong. Oh, yeah, I was fucked. Not, not entirely wrong. <laughs> Super fucked. I mean, that was raw, no lube, no, no, no holds barred. And, you know, Court put a pretty good dent in Rock's storm, you know, storm hammer or whatever. Uh, Delsa tried a little bit. Uh, I, I think she actually made him lose levels sapped his strength, so to speak. Uh, and eventually, Jacob had the opportunity to bring the skull and artifact into play. Because it turns out the skull wasn't what we really needed to know. It was the holy relic it was impaled upon. Yeah. Uh, Court manages to... You know, during the combat... Ro no, the Wraith feeling that Rock has become the weaker entity actually shifts out of him and into court. And in his recovered state, Rock actually lifts this uh, spear tip, I guess you would call it. It's an awk. I do want to take, like, I, I want to highlight something, though. Something that I thought about after the episode, after I went to sleep. I woke back up the next day and I thought about that moment where you grabbed the skull and you shoved it into Glemenath's face. And where narratively, it's a really, really interesting um, uh, interesting moment to sort of highlight. Um, one, because you went into this full-fledged combat moment and more or less dropped your blade in an effort to weaken this character. But in a moment of hilarity, my mind thought back to a classic film called Ernest Scared Stupid, where he shoved... Miak into the face of the troll. <laughs> and the troll just looked at it. 
like <laughs> it was this moment of reflection you were like look at this fucker and he was mostly confused because you like, the fuck are you showing me you poured your heart and soul into that moment and he was just like Yeet. Uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely but yeah i could continue on continue on when when uh when you grabbed on when, when you grabbed on to the to the arm yeah, so Rock manages to grab the Ankh and stabs it into court because, unlike everyone else, he's observant and notices that this is apparently something that the Wraith does not want. I think this doesn't have to do with observance, uh, more so that he felt that it was the Ankh that was yeah. causing the power drain and the sickness on Glemonath when he was inside of him. Wow, I can't just go ahead and give the guy credit. No, no. Because you're also putting down everyone no, it's else. It's not that you're smart. making us all sound stupid. I don't care about rock. <laughs> we are stupid. We're y we're kind you of you are stupid. <laughs> Look, given the opportunity, I will step on every one of your heads individually just to ascend myself. Let's be honest. In this crowd of five, we've got maybe a combined IQ of twenty. <laughs> My IQ is twenty. <laughs> I'm, I have twenty in int. Okay, we'll let we'll let you go with that. Anyways, uh, moving on. While Rock is you know shanking Court right here in the crux of the neck with this ankh, just you know stab you, stab, stab, stab. Then my shadow hand started pulling it out. It's really just like one big stab. It wasn't yeah. repeated. Because <laughs> then I yeeted you off of me quite thoroughly. While Rock was yeah. violating Court with an ankh. I could have made it worse to start with, but no, I, you had to go ahead and push. I thought I was the one who was going for the Brazzers. So. Why is that your point of escalation? <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, Jacob's standing aside, um, chanting out his spells while holding onto... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Lord. Will, I'm sorry, I forgot your old character's name. Klaus? <laughs> while holding onto Klaus's staff... <laughs> <laughs> and the staff actually responds. The angelic writings turn into infernal and, well, you know, kind of earmarked for later. But, yeah, basically he, like Harami said, chidoried, ended up hitting him for a ton of damage. It was like rammed, rammed his scythe, you know, rammed his scythe staff through court into the Ankh, buried it deep, and actually ripped out this elder wraith pinned it to the floor and dispersed it. It's true. Yeah. Which, by the way, was a chat created character. So if you guys want to fuck my night up, only $10, <laughs> you can join <laughs> Patreon. That particular character came at a much, much higher level. Oh, yeah. That's probably like one of the $100 donators. I'll figure out who the fuck did it. I'll never tell you. It was Cam. It's oh. a very limited pool of people that it could be. Abs it's absolutely Cam. I'm just going to assume all of them are guilty. <laughs> That's the better assumption. <laughs> guilty. Because, guilty because it's because of this that there was an after effect. There was apparently a death cry. Yeah, he... Uh, he this really death cry turned us into stone. Yeah. One of us almost got away with it. Yep. And, and then he decided to... Reroll. To a lower number, and then we're not—we're not, we're not going to point fingers. We're not going to name names. Lower number. Mistakes were made. Thus, you know, the flurry of bros, you know, the bumblefucks themselves, are all technically at this point dead-ish. I mean, super but, dead. But y'all been dead for a minute. Right, the well, well, has one not... of us is getting better. I mean, yeah, Ronald Ronald was dead for a few. Technically, uh, your order now is the the order of of shield and soul. Yes. So, I mean, it's honestly, it sounds way more like 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 a, like a guild or or a group of cell swords than the flurry of bros. Oh, look, we were um, a great mercenary group. It sounds like you guys just destroy every every kegger as <laughs> as the flurry of bros. Was that was that not an apt description? I mean, that's what I came into this game to do. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh this fucking God. story yeah. shit? I just want to blow. Some up people come up. in for keg stands. Rock comes in to stand that keg. Mm. <laughs> Fireball doper. <laughs> he just, you know, snatch lifts that bad boy and chugs it. 
But uh, yeah, see, right now like, we're all kind of stoned. That's very, like, I feel like that's very rock at that moment to like, to make a point. He drinks the entire keg and then proceeds to whip it up <laughs> over his head as high as he possibly can. No, no, fuck that. He goes ahead, tips that kegger, and then does the can smash on his forehead. Oh my God. I was thinking he threw it up and then hit it with his earthbreaker to see how far he could baseball bat. Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of, I mean, that, well, you know. He's got more class than that. He's not All a of the bar. above, man. I, I attend above. parties with multiple cakes for this reason alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At some point, I mean, when you start getting drunk enough, you don't really need the Earthbreaker anymore. You just throw your head and yeet that bitch out the wall. So, not the head, the, the keg area. I mean, you, you get the Let's picture. Just, just open up the pit. Yeah. At that point, just use a full keg when you, when you baseball bat it so that you can just cover the town in the gold. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that or he just goes ahead and whips the loincloth on and hits it with the real Earthbreaker. No. No. Why? 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 We can't have nice things because of you. This is why. God. All right. Oh, man. So. Not, not even nice memories anymore. Like. Uh, we did end <laughs> with Gilfrey uh, showing up. And, the... and this is why Jacob's yes. not coming back. Oh yeah, yes. the uh, the guy who hates Jacob like a lot, like who kind of wants to kill him for killing his grandson. He uh, he was cool enough to uh, revive Court on the uh, the edge of death and uh, save him. But also, he still really hates Jacob. But Jacob's also a rock now, so he he might be less angry at the rock, but he might also go back and punch him in the face. Yeah. Was there anything oh, that yeah. was missed? So one of us isn't dead. Yes. Yeah, I'm not. Hi. Nabikins was up on uh, up on the balcony afterwards. Yeah, he was he was watching. He was kind of pissed. Yeah, he was a little he was a little livid after he saw his son get death wailed. Yeah. He, he crushed the the balcony with his with his pincers. He did, in fact. Do you think that was oh, yeah, like we... finally the, uh... he's died, or do you think this was out of upset? The other big I think he's point. a sad daddy. The other big plot point to uh, to not miss, daddy, which daddy. which is also talking about Jacob's sad daddy, is the uh, the fact that we do definitely know that Jacob was a uh, the small child. For those who haven't seen that, from uh, way back when. Ah uh, yes, and in the parting scene, Nap the Torin tore apart a guardrail, having witnessed his son's death. Right. Apparently, even demon generals have feelings. Yeah. Aww. Or he just had plans for you and they just got crushed. Yeah, he's just like, ah, that's, fuck! That sounds more in line with his... With his gotta do work again. God, this fuck up every time. My I father gotta... loved me, goddammit. <laughs> Who's gonna we will take this from now. you and leave you with nothing. It's very interesting to have two characters with uh, parental there's, issues. Well. There's a lot to un fucking unfold right there, my guys. <laughs> we, we might need to take a break because he was serious about that. <laughs> I'm not sure which... Strangely real. <laughs> Daddy, no, just, why'd you leave me? <laughs> just gloss over it. Let's just move on to the next spot before it gets too real. Yeah. Oh, man. Don't so, give him time to think. That's when he's dangerous. <laughs> Whoa. Me or Jacob? All of the above. <laughs> yes. All of the above. So, Ronald, is there anything TKs. additionally that that you feel as if they've missed that may have been glossed over? Um, we pretty much got that sorted. Uh, I think we covered everything in terms of, uh, of what happened last session. Um, I did a good recap. The scythe was Mostly. buried in, in the stone in the ground. Correct. That was something that happened. Um, the reason Glemonast didn't hop bodies again was because he was tied to Court's body when the ankle was shoved into him. He was anchored. Yes. Aside from those two things, I think we got everything. Yeah. But but those are minor details that aren't super important. Yeah, I think that's right. I feel like that's accurate. Um, anything else last? What did Gilfrey say? Uh, he, um, I don't remember verbatim what he said, but essentially he was uh, telling Court that um, he made a foolish choice siding with us, and this is kind of the end result of what it meant to, to join up with our group. Yeah. How did the camera pull away? What was the very last scene? It wasn't just Nav the Torn. Um, the, uh, the threads were slowly starting to suture the wound of, of yes. Court. 
Yes. You think Kord's just going to walk away from this? Hell no, because he's not technically healed. He just stifled the bleeding. So yep. if anything, he's he's got stitches, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're you're treated. I don't know what you're doing to your microphone, but it definitely makes you sound like you're talking into the bottom of a metal trash can. For me? Yes. So if, you, if you're like holding it underneath you. <gasps> I just thought about it. It is better? true. Say it again. Does this sound better? Yes, it does. But I just thought about it. Red, it is true. Snitches do get stitches. I almost did. He didn't. Oh, he, you know, he told on Jacob. So What? He totally did. I think you've technically told on lots of people. Yeah, yeah but not. Oh, you told on me, too. Of, uh, a snitching mentality. Nabby didn't know I existed until you just walked up and was like, oh, oh bullshit. You snitched the <laughs> fuck out of Jacob. He's, he's the son of Nap the Torian. What? <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, the, I think we got everything on that recap, at least for the last session. Okay, good. Good. Then we return to Cauldron. <sighs> to the inevitable city on fire, if you will. Everything is, is bad in this place. How you, how you come out of this will be a surprise. But I believe that where there is a will, there is a way. In this I case, that applies, at one will. It, it applies twofold. Yeah, this should be interesting. So I'm going to pass this over to Ronald, and I'm going to describe your opening here, sir. As the camera moves and slowly hovers, panning scene for scene, time passing over the top of a shield. A shield that has since gone neglected. It's been turned to face a desk. And the mayor has had many other things to worry about. He'd heard of a being by the name of Glemenath. He knew Glemenath. He knew what Glemenath was capable of. A haunting, an echo from his past. For some reason, even he feared. But, things have since grown quiet. There have been no reported deaths. There have been some weird weird sightings or sounds reported coming from a temple but upon arrival all that was there was statues and a dying boy come on, push the button. Yeah, they didn't really know what to do so the boy was escorted away he was taken to a town healer he looked very very worse for wear something nearly cleaved through his entire body the closer and closer you seem to get to emerging from your shield, you find yourself in a situation where you can hear more. The scribbles, the rantings, and the ravings of the mayor. Little things here and there. Nothing really of pertinence. It really only cements the fact that while he may be something far worse and nastier than others have anticipated him being, he's still anchored to this town. And he tends to his daily duties. He meets with lots of people during the day, people you have no idea what of, with extended vocabulary, speaking of tithes and orders, coffers filling and emptying quickly. Before finally you find yourself breaking through that final layer and emerging from the shield. With a clatter, you will appear upon the floor of the mayor's office. There is no fire. The mayor is not there. It is nighttime. You stand alone. Naked. What do you do? Um, as I start to get uh, a grip of my surroundings, uh, probably look for some clothes, assuming I don't have any. So that would probably be the first thing. Immediately around you, you find nothing that looks like clothes. There is uh, a tapestry. The or anything. There's a tapestry that hangs freely from the wall. It's a map. Um, a cloth. It looks like a cloth map of the city at one point. Um, there is a coat that is sized for a very normal small man that dons the back of the the, uh, the chair. But the closest thing that you can find in a way of clothing yourself is a curtain. A curtain that hangs from the top of the window to the floor. Uh, 
then yeah, I'd probably take that. Um, probably like toga wrap it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, once I do that though, I would uh, probably take my shield with me. Uh, seeing as when I was fighting Gloominath, I, I knew uh, holy damage did damage to him. So assuming my shield has the same kind of properties, I can probably fight him again. Similar. It's not a terrible idea. Either way, you take it with you. Now that you've managed to toga this up upon yourself, and I'm not going to make you make a check to see how well you tie it. I'm not going to spook any of the interns or the, the lowest hanging help with various dwarven peen. That's not the case. But you will find that there are people that are walking throughout the home. You know that there are multiple ways out. Going through the front door is only one. You've found another. Jumping out the window. <laughs> yeah. You can go that way. Um, Probably not wanting to uh, raise a, an alarm for, for his... Uh, his servants, I would probably uh, make that same exit again. Uh, this time a little less rush, so I mean I would time my jump a little more effectively so I'm not like hitting the ground too hard or anything like that. I'm assuming that you're also not going to just huck your body out a glass window that you're like... Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, Severin's got the money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, so... But yeah, I, I would open it back up. Um, actually, I would leave a note. Um, okay. I'd probably write it in Dwarven uh, instead of Common. And the note will say, uh, Severin, um, I've been uh, reformed. I need my shield to stop the uh, uh, impending threat. Signed, Olheim. And then leave it on his desk. Do you leave any note about the curtain? Uh, I, I, yeah, I would put probably like a small invoice. Not sure how much uh, this curtain was. I will pay you back uh, ASAP. <laughs> Perfect. And one and one drink, and then just kind of leave it at that and make my way out. Okay. P.S. Curtains are so fourteen hundred. Yeah. Well, there's not exactly many tailors inside of the mayor's office at three o'clock in the morning that are willing to make clothes for a pomet. But yeah. what do I know? So you take the curtain, you toga it up, you grab the shield, you leave a letter, and you open the window and heave your body over the crenellated wall. You leap. Actually, give me an acrobatics, if you would, please. Dex acrobatics. Never we have a reroll. It's not great. Did you want to? Do you want to use that? And no, you I mean. I'm not trying. It's. I mean, it's not a say the thing of of grace. And even if I hit, I'm I'm not worried about the uh, the repercussions of falling from a two or three story building. You sure. Know? Give me a give me a reflex. Significantly better. Uh, maybe on the way out of the window, you felt yourself preparing the leap, but you didn't anticipate it before. You just you threw your body through the window. You didn't. It didn't matter about the glass, but in an effort to actually take care of of his things, not damage his, his home or his personal belongings anymore, you don't anticipate your, your foot clipping the wall. So. I would probably say um, the reason that happens is because even with immortality, Olheim still has a phobia of heights. Okay. So as he's like looking, like as he uh, looks out the window, he just goes, so much higher than last time. Must have been the magic that he had. <sighs> home be with me. And then he fucking jumps. <laughs> the mayor's home does have a crenellated fence. Um, it's it's actually like a small keep inside of a town that's built in the caldera of a volcano. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like a... Um, if you could picture it, it feels sort of like the classic Koopa's Castle from... Uh, the original Nintendo, uh, so it is, except it's got a crenellated wall just on the outside of it. Yeah, crenellations are, um, if you would, picture picture a wall where it's like, it's stone flat, and then it rises up, and then down again. So it's like, um, a sort of like parapet for you to hide behind, that sort of thing. Uh, but you manage to leap out, and it's not, it's not a beautiful looking thing, but you manage to recover. You recover quite well. 
You hit the ground, and with a tumble, you seem to come up to knee and push back up to your feet. Nobody seems to make much of it. Again, it's late, and there is still a curfew. Now that you're outside, I would say, what's yeah, next? I would say as I, as I land the uh, the shield, because it has the ability to become bladed, it sticks into the ground, but there's no like sound of impact. You just, you just hear it go... It just sinks? Yeah, and then he kind of lifts it back out, and then kind of just... A little surprised by how easily it kind of went through, lifts it back up, and um, he'll make his way uh, to the temple. I mean, that's the last place he knows where his friends were at. Sure. Why do you know that they're there? Um, Glumenath. That's the last place. That's that, your last memory, right? My last memory of it. Well, at least of me seeing them. Well, I saw them disappear, but I don't know if they're still there or not. So okay, that's fair. All right. That's, yeah. Okay, so do you just walk brazenly down the street in your bold yet adventurous outfit? No. So um, given given what's happening right now, I would probably try to employ some sense of subtlety, even though that there's not that many people in the city. I don't really want to draw attention with the shield out because then it's going to look like I'm armed and ready for something. Oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to stick it like a sore thumb. You have one, oh, God. Picture this, if you will, chat, if you would, please. It's nighttime in a world where there are not lampposts. At absolute best, there are various torches or lanterns hung from from front porches where you have starlight and the moon casting down from above. But it's in the eaves and the awnings of the town, it's fairly pitch black. However, there are two pinpoint beacons that guide the floor or the the dirt alley, if you will, that lead all the way up to the face of a darkened dwarf, a pomet. Um, it comes from a bit more of an Egyptian setting. It's not just your typical dwarf. They have very, like, sun-kissed skin, and their hair at times can have uh, bits of, like, blonde in it. Um, additionally, while he is wearing a silken blue toga that he made out of a curtain, he is wielding a shield that has a screaming face on it. One of his arms looks like wrought and twisted iron metal and the other looks to be like a paladin's entirely like sculpted paladin steel arm with a face screaming on it yes with a child's face screaming out of the shoulder uh so he you are you're just nightmare fuel yeah with my eye socket glowing gold (laughs) yeah his eyes that's that's what i was saying the beacons the two eyes yeah his eyes emanate this uh, this radiant glare. Despite his rough exterior, he's actually a peach, I promise. Well, most of the time. So. You duck to the alleys to twists and turns to deviate away from the street. You want a stealth check for that, or? Sure, hit me with it. You're not going to be, you're not going to be stopped by any kind of equipment. It doesn't take much. The cover of night... As long as you know how to close your eyes at the right moment, you do not alert any of the guards. You find your way to the Temple of Lijas. It's cold and silent. The only sound is the eking of one lone hanging, unlit lantern from the front. The doors are opened. Um, it swings in the wind. Kind of putting my back to the door, and even seeing the damage from the outside, I would assume that. Just kind of thinking in my head, the battle probably moved moved down here at one point and probably shifted back upstairs. So, kind of steals himself and he gets ready to rush in. Okay. Give me a perception, please. It's really good. Really, really good. Um, you can immediately notice that, yeah, there there was something something terrible happened here. Now, I would go as far as saying that it was a, a small earthquake of sorts. Building is not in great, great shape. It's far from what I would say is ruins, but something hit this thing with fantastic force. It's no longer this pristine piece of architecture that is crafted... Perfectly. And now has a bit of a slant, a lean to it, 
you notice that some of the stones seem to be variously lodged. A strong breeze you believe might be able to untether a stone and bring the entire building down. And when you step inside, your eyes circle and you can see that there are various pillars that have been just completely destroyed. Something taking out over half. Your eyes turn again to the right-hand side, internal to the building, and there is uh, a lot of a wall and series of stairs that were brought down similarly so. A one-man wrecking crew, and you know that while Court is capable, he doesn't immediately have the right tools for the job. Rock, on the other hand, his Earthbreaker would, would be more than enough to bring this place down. And your eyes focus then on the center. The moonlight peering in behind you, casting your silhouette. But these strips of black seem to run out from your person. But when you focus your eyes, these ribbons and rivulets of, of tears in the floor is blood. Uh, um, I put my hand down to it. Is it... It's still wet. It's dried. It's been dried now for at least a few days. But it stains the marble. I'll uh, keep my shield up and I'll uh, I'll cast uh, is it detect evil? Detect good and evil? Sure. Uh, my paladin ability. I just need to check what it's called. Detect alignment. Sure. Uh, yeah. If you want to queue that up in chat, that would be probably pretty helpful. A paladin at will can use this and determine with concentration upon a single item within 60 feet. Interestingly enough, there is nothing here that eeks of good or evil. Um, you notice, I'll cut the vision. You do notice that there is a familiar object in front of you, and when your eyes train upon it, it's the scythe. It's a scythe that you saw Jacob using. He's had it now for a while. You don't know if it was his to begin with, but for some reason he had it. But it does look different. And the blade end of the scythe is embedded in the stone, the marble, if you will. When you follow the haft, you see two stone hands wrapped intently around it. And when it moves all the way up to the person, you can then make out the shape of Jacob. At first, it's a little hard to see, but when you focus your eyes, there he stands, each arm, two around the staff, two hanging closely at his body, his face twisted in malice, and at the base of the blade, a vast amount of blood. Wilhelm uh, slowly walks over. You peer around and you start to notice other figures as well. Rock. How was Rock standing or laying or sitting what what does this look like so basically um i would have been mid charging back at court when the final explosion happened um i believe i was thrown off of him prior to the final blow being dealt i needed you then stood up and then uh, walked past you so likely full-on rage screaming hammer in hands Okay. Remember that the hammer looked broke. <clears throat> Perfect. Court isn't there. You can't seem to locate him, but there is another figure. A bit more of a feminine shape. Describe your stance. Um, Thelsa knows of, of the arcane at least a little bit, and uh, knowing that someone was casting a powerful spell, especially on death, she probably would have cowered, so... It's likely she's got her hand over her face like this. And uh, I wouldn't say fear, but like preparation on her face. Taking a full defense before. 
Yeah, kind of like taking a full defense, but, you know, not prepared for what was actually coming. Just out of curiosity, Austin, is there like a little toy train track going on in your background? Yeah, that little uh, toy train is called my uh, CPU fan. It's fun. Yeah. I, I'm, I also, that's why I was talking earlier. Jesus about fucking Christ. Do you not own a screwdriver? <laughs> it's not, no, I, it's bracketed. Um, it's the, the fan itself is like falling off the, uh, the I, rubber band. You gotta like, like tape that shit in place, man. I feel like there's your monitor and then just behind it, what's supposed to be your computer is a giant metal factory. <laughs> or just, powers just your... a bunch of tiny guys with jackhammers. <laughs> Like we're talking like eight inch dudes, just like I still prefer to think it's a toy train with Frankie just riding on it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I thought immediately. And that would have made me incredibly happy, but I'm sorry to hear that it's your CPU. That's fucking yeah, rough. I I, 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 rough. I need to replace my GPU, my CPU, and my hard drive. Those are my three things. Ah, so you mean you need a new computer? Just, yeah. I, well, like new at case. this point, it's already almost a new computer. No, it's yeah, not. No, so, not with well, a fan well, sounding well, like really that. All I need to do is replace the hard drive and the uh, CPU. I'm good. Yeah, but the problem is that none of your chassis components have been replaced, including your fan, which is why it's now rattling like that. It's why I need to get it. It's why I'm trying to get a new CPU cooler. He's like, I just need new ports. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> new I need more USB ports. It wouldn't be making this issue if I had if I had more USB yeah, ports. It needs a new heart, a brain, and lungs, but it's it's still mostly alive. Yeah. <laughs> I replaced the skin. Frankie, it's a Frankie computer. Yeah, it's got these sweet flashing lights now, guys, but it... No, it's had those since the start. It's probably going to lose those. <laughs> those are next. Yeah. That'll be the next thing that goes wrong. Don't worry. Once the fan goes, the LEDs start kicking. Oh you also want to know what dresses up dead things? Morticians. There you go. That's what you did to your computer. And taxidermists. There you go. Oh, Suge, that's okay. I just turned 33 and, and myself. Me. You don't dress them up. You just make sure my sensitivity back up. It was up on Discord. I forgot that wasn't up on Discord. Right. Yeah. Um seeing uh seeing this happen, or at least kind of taking a quick step back to kind of get the positioning to I guess run whatever scenario I'm assuming happened. From what I see, it looks like they were all fighting each other or something in the center of where they're at. And this occurred. Um, I mean, Ulfheim is like standing there just like horrified. I mean, his, his best friend and his two allies are, are there and he doesn't see court, right? You do court not see court. Carded. Um, kind of trying to figure out what to do. Ulfheim uh, charges up a spell and he he looks over to Thalsa first, and he casts Dispel Magic on her to see if... Show me Dispel Magic, yeah. please. Enough to, to turn my stone arm into human, and I just give him the finger, then it returns to stone. One standard action. You can use Dispel Magic to end one ongoing spell that has been cast on a creature object to temporarily suppress the magical abilities of a magic item, or to counter another spellcaster spell. A dispelled spell ends as, as if its duration had expired. Some spells, as detailed in their descriptions, cannot be defeated by dispel magic. Dispel magic can dispel. Okay, let's see. The effects of a spell instantaneous duration cannot be dispelled because the magical effect is already over before the dispel magic could take effect. You choose to dispel magic in one of two ways, a targeted spell or a counter spell. Well, you're incapable of targeting the spell because you weren't there. You're incapable of counter spelling because it's already been cast. It's not even really a spell, it's a spell-like ability. One object, one creature, okay. the spell is the target of a dispel. So in this case, the long and the short of it is, before having to make a roll and doing anything too crazy, it's not functional. It doesn't work. Okay. Um, then I'll, I'll burn it. I mean, my intention was to cast it, so. I feel like it's it's not a concentration spell, which is what spell magic is typically used for. It's just like, uh, it, this is the after effect of a spell that's already been cast. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't like my character doesn't. Yeah, so no, right, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You don't know. Um, seeing like this this blue wave of uh, divine energy trying to like form over her, kind of just shoots around and realizing that it doesn't have any effect. Um, 
Olheim will still ready himself because, I mean, he's not sure if Blumenath is still there. He knows that uh, it possessed Rock, so if Court's not there, he's assuming that it possessed him, so he would probably also go back to the same location that he remembered fighting him, thinking he might be back at the top again. Um, Olheim would probably grab the scythe, too, as a as a way to ready himself with the, with the weapon. Um, is it, is there a way to slide it off? Obviously without like how do you breaking his fucking wrist. <laughs> how do you, how do you get it up there? How do you get yourself up to that, that point? Oh, you set the uh, stairs and stuff were destroyed, right? Yeah. Stay a while and listen. There is an overlook from, uh, the head master's chambers into the main room, but it's like two floors up. And it's this is a sizable place. Remember, this is the tallest building in all of Cauldron. Yeah. Um, would make hole work? Uh, show me make hole. Uh, with a W, right? Yes. Thank goodness. I don't need more holes in my building. Spell repairs, damage objects, restoring 1d4 hit points to the object. If the object has been broken, no. Um, restoring 1d4 hit points to this as a smooth stone, they have like 190 hit points. It would take you hours. Hours with a casting time of 10 minutes. Yeah. Unless, of course, there is something that's going to give it more... We cast on a construct creature. That's for a creature. Yeah, because otherwise it just restores 1d4 hit points to an object. Oh, this is this is only for broken condition. These this is destroyed. This isn't it's not even broken condition. Oh, okay. Okay. It's it's just flat oh. out destroyed. Yeah, Rock did a number on this. Um, if anything, then I try to find another way around to see if there's a way to get up to the uh, the next floor other than that one that one area. You can see that there is, as any stated, an upper balcony. If you had a way to, I'm uh, not sure, maybe uh, hoist a rope up there, a grappling hook, that sort of thing. There is no uh, structure for you to immediately climb, though. Uh, true, that is true. Um. Damn. I mean, kind of stuck. Then. Um, I would probably try to go outside then to see if there was any form of rope, and then something I could probably use as like a makeshift grapple to try and scale the wall. Okay. This. At this time, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to find about anything at all. Um, because when they when they return to stone, I mean, unless you have anything back at your back at your you know your your own personal location, right at the bathhouse. Yeah. If there was anything there, I mean, we had we had supplies there, but I mean, it's it's if it's basic adventuring equipment. I mean, would that be something that would be in there to to grab? Feasible. Feasible. Remember, when you guys acquired the place, there were some things in the basement already. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, I mean, I, I'm not hearing anything else. And seeing as my friends are currently stone right now and court's missing, I would probably try to find something so that way I can get back up to the top, especially knowing that that's the last location that I've seen him. He might be hiding there. So, uh, Ulheim will, will, will probably run would probably run out. Um, he's probably not going <clears> to <throat> hide in this case, knowing that his friends might, there might be a chance to save him or there, there's something he can do, depending on uh, if he's able to stop Gluminath, which is dead, but he doesn't know that yet. Okay. Yeah, All right. He would, uh, he would probably try to find uh, Severn first, because I don't think he'd probably want to go in alone with this either. So he's probably going to try to find someone who's just as capable. So when, when you say go in, what, what do you mean? Like, help help fight. 
find what he's he, he's uh Gluminath. okay like all right sure, he's sure, gonna sure. try to enlist aid essentially well he's... the problem is you you saw rock and you saw felsa correct and you were aware that his entire goal was to kill the woman. And the woman's dead. Oh, that's right. So knowing knowing that then if his mission was complete, he probably left. But that means Court's still missing though. Yeah, correct. Um I just went to go party at Charlie's. You house. did hear you did hear that that a boy was found and was sent to a town healer. That might apply to Cord. There are many boys then in the, the town. The only town healer I know is Genya currently. That's accurate, yeah. So then getting that, I would probably make my way there then. Okay. All right, sure. So where, where, where what location are you exactly heading to? Um, I would say as I'm trying to trek my way through the city, I realize what's going, like I kind of piece it together what's happening. And then um, I would start off in the direction of the bathhouse and then immediately head towards uh, Genya's. Okay, sounds good. Then you do just that. You curtail to the bathhouse and then head immediately to Genya's. You stop briefly by the bathhouse to grab uh, some things. Particularly, you're hoping to find a rope, at the very least a rope. While nobody has ever professed in having a, um, a grappling hook, you can at the very least find a rope. Yeah, So I'd probably also try yes. to find some of those spikes Pittance? So, yeah. So, uh, I'd probably take a couple of those as well and then just kind of just quickly put them on uh, in a backpack and then just start making my way over. Sure. Um, as you, before you leave though, um, as you had entered into the bathhouse, um, you did see a figure, a person sitting back to the wall, uh, closest to the office, your resting areas. I would slow my trek then. Who are you? Face turns, and as your eyes adjust to see the figure, it's Marion. Mary, you're still alive. Good, good. He kind of wipes his eyes for a moment. A lime? Yes. Uh, are the others back now? He kind of looks away and just shakes his head. No, it has. Has Court come through here? Have you seen him at all? No, we have not seen Court at all. I was hoping that if I stayed long enough, that you would... Someone would come back. He kind of postulates with his hand, gestures out. Um, do me a favor right now. Um, just take two nights at the, uh, the tankard. Uh, there's... There's something I have, I have to take care of before before you, you and Chops can come back, before I know it's absolutely safe. Please. I... Just two nights, that's it. I, there, there shouldn't be a problem. Um, give me perception. It's not going to be very difficult for you to hear, but I'd like a perception. You uh, you hear the sounds of, of feet over stone, um, and they're coming from behind Marion. And Chobbs rounds the corner where Marion was sitting. He just sort of rounds to that open doorway. And he's rubbing his eyes. And he looks up. Hey, voices. <sighs> hey, little warrior. How's, how's it going? Are they back? And he, like, he looks to, to Marion. No, they're, uh, they're taking care of guild business. As you can see, look. Look around you. Place is still messy, right? Yes, yes. The best way to be a good warrior is to be to be organized. So, they're on a quest right now to to find ways to to better clean the uh, the guild house. Well, why aren't you with them then? I had to come back and, and get some things, but right now you're going to be going to the the tankard. Give me a bluff. Town. I'll re-roll that. Yeah, okay. That's significantly better. Because I would have beat you. 
Yeah. He kind of looks onto you and you see his brow sort of drop a little bit as he's as he's sort of processing what you said. Okay. Well, when you when you see Rock, will you will you tell him I'm getting stronger? You can you can tell him that when you see him when he comes back, okay? And he kind of like he smile like you get this like weird like half smirk at the corner of his mouth and uh He's like, I'll show him. Like, draws his fist up real close to his face. Uh, Olheim puts his hand out. Come on, let's see it then. <laughs> not, not, not really capable of the much. Genitals. Um, you see I know, him. but like, he just kind of, he kind of just wants to see him like throw like a punch just to see, just sure. kind of get his spirits up. He, he, let like he brings his fists up like he's gonna do something, but you can tell it's sort of as if, if as if he's like trying to stretch clothing. There's not much to it still. Remember, yeah. he's he's not even 10 years old. He's just a little yeah. kid. So, like, he, he pulls his fist way far back behind his head and just lobs the punch right over his head and kind of leans into it. And, it like, it doesn't even register to you. Yeah. But then again, at the same time, as an undead, unless something directly impacts your hit points, you're not going to feel it at all. Yeah. Pain doesn't even register for you unless it comes across as a cursed source. Um, As he, as he kind of does that and, like, flails his arm, he... Uh... Puts his like elbow down and then like turns him a bit and he goes, lean into it like that. That's how you throw a punch. As you're like showing him what to do, he's sort of like you look down and he's he's kind of looking at his hands like ah ah because he just punched a metal glove and yeah wasn't really expecting like, ah oof. he's like blowing over his clothes. He's like ooh hey ooh. warriors need to get strong right uh -huh. no complaining. Uh -huh. Marion like pats him on the butt and he's like, go get your things. We're we're going to the tankard. Okay. And like he turns around and starts walking back. Ah, ah. I'll send word in a couple of days if anything changes, but as of right now, there's uh like I said, stuff that I have to attend to. I won't lie. It doesn't seem good. I I understand. Um uh, but please just Come let us know something soon. I will. Stay safe. And uh, he'll he'll grab his uh, his materials and he'll head out. Okay. You find a rope with ease. You also find that there is a small pack with pittons. Uh, they seem to be scattered and mixed in with caltrops and things of the like, but um, it doesn't really matter to you. Um, amidst everything that has happened... And the shakiness of the world around you, there is still something that is so grounding to see Chobbs in that moment. Where he's, he, he believes that you're telling the truth, that they're out doing a mission. But there's always a small part of him that thinks that that's not the case. Yeah, I mean... I, I, don't, I know class-wise, paladins aren't supposed to lie, but it's kind of one of those things where... Like, I kind of have to for the kid's sake. Like, to tell him, like, yeah, your friends have been petrified. I don't know if they're ever coming back. You're fucking it's... dead, kid. You better start getting used to it. Yeah, like, Rock's literally a rock right now. Like, look. And... <laughs> so it's just... like, like telling telling them that it's, it, it obviously, it doesn't do him any good to, to to make his world any darker than what it already is, you know? Yeah. He yeah, just saw his sense. parents get fucking crushed in a gazebo. Not even a week ago. Yeah. So about yeah, about as much time. That's accurate. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things that I'm like, even if it if it comes at a detriment detriment to like one of my abilities or way to fight, like I would rather take that than have him suffer. Sure, 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 sure. Um, that makes sense. So I mean, with that, um, just as I leave, uh, I pat him on the head, and then give uh, Marion another nod, and I'll uh, full sprint uh, to Genius. Okay. I'd probably change my clothes so that way I'm not fucking tapestry running myself. Uh, yeah, makes sense. There. Yeah, so it'd be some boots, brown pants, so that, that white kind you, of. You don't have a spare. Shirt. You don't have a, a spare set of boots, man. You know, like you guys oh, never then. never had extra clothes made. I, I imagine that you probably have spare like stone spare tunic. Work, though. True, but they didn't keep any of their belongings here. Or sure. never kept yeah. his stuff here. You guys have technically never found where they've resided. 
Um, but you'll be able to find some basic clothing. You're just not going to find boots and, and like straps and stuff that are sized to fit you. Yeah. So, I mean, if anything, then the pants and uh, probably the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like a half work shirt. So it's a little baggy, but it works. Way baggy. You got it. You got um, it. But he makes his way out. He starts starts running. <laughs> I could say, you're gonna, you're gonna figure out a way to get them to all be on stone, and Rock's gonna be like, "You fucking wearing my shirt? <laughs> like, <laughs> how long have we been dead?" And then, <laughs> like that's the first thing he asks. Been dead for fucking twenty four hours, and you take my shit? Yeah, yeah. That's my, I could just. That's, that's my favorite shirt, and you just you wore it. <laughs> like I don't even want it anymore. You didn't don't, even ask. <laughs> I gotta burn it now. Oh man, it's too good. It's too good. But you'll make your way to to ye old alchemist, as you recall. This is where Jania was staying, Correct. at least for the time being. Yeah. Even in, yeah. in the depth of night, in the earliest hours before sunup, this is the one place that still has lights on. The cracked window. Good shows that there are still people sitting inside. And before, where you had seen that there were multiple people waiting to be treated for what ails them, now there's only a few. And in completely in true topical form, Jenya passes by the door, seeing a figure outside of it. And she opens it, and when she sees you, she blinks for a few times, a few moments, and she invites you in, but you notice she's wearing some sort of rudimentary doctor's mask. It's mostly like a linen wrapped around her face. It disguises her scars that she's received from the burns, but it also has shielded various splatter, something that has kicked up to, to cover her. Yeah. In a muffled tone, I would say it's good to see you, but... And she kind of pulls it down. Why are you here this late? Why, why, why are you here at the moment? Or, I'm sorry to uh, bug you, um, Miss Jenya, but his court here, young, young knight, um, he probably came by here a couple of times. Mm, yes, our court is here. He's very, very badly injured. He's been... Can I see him, please? Yes, but I would recommend that you do not disturb him. He is sleeping and has been sleeping now for two days. You n notice then at that moment when she says that, that it's been two days. Likely why your dispel didn't work, as far as you can tell. But it's been two days. She ushers you inside and you see that there is a handful of sick people. Some of them sleeping. A few of them sort of gazing around the room in this almost drunken like haze they seem very very ill you notice before that there were upper 30 upper 40 hanging around but now there's less than 10 and she points to a back room he's in there I have to I have to tell you though he is He's very badly wounded. I understand. He's young. He should still recover, but... There are some things that I cannot do. You've done more than you've realized. Thank you for taking care of him. And then he kind of looks over to the, uh, the sick people. I would like to think things have gotten better, but I'm assuming that's a no. No. No, I'm afraid that it's it's only gotten worse. More have died. Some of them unexplainably so, but amidst them was the coroner, and now I have adapted his job as well. He gives a slow nod to her. I'll help you with this as soon as I can. Just by chance, do you know where this originated from? Forgive me for my candor, but I don't believe you will help me. You would have helped already, if you could. The sick are getting sicker. And if they're not getting sicker, it's because they've died. 
No, and I've not been able to pinpoint where it's coming from. But my guess at this point, based on what little I know, is that because I am not ill, it is not immediately contagious. It's something ingested. I've been purifying my own food and water now for days. It is the way that we are taught at St. Cuthbert's. Well, the way that we would have continued teaching. I understand. I'll look into it. And I'm sorry for my absence. It's not your absence that worries about, that I worry about so much. It's now more so that you've returned. And I mean not to offend, but behind your lot, there are a fair amount of bodies that follow. And this town is not doing well, I'm sure you can see. And I have my own problems to worry about. I've, I've been wrought in cursed fire, and it still burns. No matter the amount of praying or care that I that I undertake or put myself through, it still burns. But no one else is caring for these people. Fronlert is missing. The rest of the churches have fallen. And I'm afraid that I am the only, I am the last still in town with faith. They believe that the gods have abandoned them. And I find that funny. Because they say that the gods have abandoned them only while in your absence. Leaps and bounds, Alheim. It speaks leaps and bounds. It is then at this point that you sort of see this person. You like you're you're peering over Jenya, and she is far past exhausted. It's that point of exhaustion where there is no light in the eyes. The filter is completely gone. You just have the rawest element of Jenya right here, and her candor is nothing but pure honesty. It's ironic. Alheim, do you remember if Thelsa told you about uh, the supply party that she ordered that's coming? I don't remember if I had mentioned it at the party or not at all. I don't think no. so. You were on the run at that point, and I had been exodiated for two days. Well, I had ordered this prior to Glemonath's encounter. No, I wasn't made aware about it. Okay. You told me you're going to Sasserin again, but outside of that, I didn't know what it was for. Okay. I just wanted to, to re-up that in case I, I wasn't sure if, if you would know or not. Negative. Um, well, I'm, uh, I mean, can't really argue her point. Just gives her a nod and turns over to, turns his way over to, uh, towards court and uh, enters the room. Sure. You find your way to the rear room. It's a door that is poorly fitted. You can see through the cracks in the door itself. There's a gap below the door, so even a rat could squeak through. This wasn't a storeroom. A storeroom would be protected to a degree, but then again, who knows how far in disrepair Cauldron actually is and all of its buildings. But when you step inside... There is a single torch that is lit, tucked into a sconce, and there across the table, angled just to the side, it looks as if his the right side of his body has been pushed up. Uh, she's using books currently, bits of dirty rag, and she's m stripped the clothing away from, from that part of his body. The right side of his body is still covered, but you can see that from the upper the upper, like, clavicle area on the left side, down past the navel, is a very, very vicious wound. You've not seen anything like this in a while. The skin itself is puckered and trying to, like, pull back. Something yeah. itself burned the skin. And then someone had gone a step further as to try to mend it. And... Not as far as stapled, but stitched it shut. So 
He looks a little bloated, to say the least. Um, walking, walking in, uh, Oheim will put his shield off to the side. And he uh, slowly approaches the table. His breathing he is could... faint and pallid. Still alive, boy. It's here that you realize, like peering down at him, without the armor, without the leathers and the sword, he really is kind of amazing to see the sort of destructive force that he brings down upon people with and while looking at him there's not really much to him he's not he's not built like Gaston right he's built more like a swimmer he's just this sort of little guy but he carries momentum well and he's managed to fell some foes that few others really have but before you now is a boy. Um, Ulheim picks up uh, picks up Quartz's uh, right hand <clears throat> and he squeezes it. You've done a you've done a great job, lad. You really have. And Jenya has, has done incredible work to get you this to this point. I'm not sure what hell you've been brought through, but let's try to get you fixed up. Um, as Olheim squeezes his hand tighter, the uh, gauntlet starts to glow, and he will transfer 50 of his, 51 of his own uh, hit points into court. So you just start seeing the, uh, the light uh, draining from the gauntlet and it starts funneling into court, uh, adding to the, re the repairing and, and mending of his uh, his body. Um, from that, it would be uh, you start seeing like small like cracks and stuff again forming over uh, Olheim's body as he's taking damage, transferring this this energy into him. Okay. Uh, over two days, how much of my stats would have come back? To, come come back? Came back? Well, um... if I'm near comatose. Next to nothing. Okay. Next to nothing. Uh, she's done her best to to alleviate uh, any any additional infection. Um, yeah. But as far a, as uh, actual health points and as numbers far as hit gone. points go, um, you let's just assume that you were sitting around ten. Yeah, I, I was. I was just around that give or take. So, so uh, you get so about essentially assume that plus fifty. Fifty more. Yeah. Okay. So I'll be at 61 temporarily, or well, currently. The bloat doesn't quite subside from the body. Remember, it's... Mechanically, it's just hit points. It doesn't actually mend the wound. Sometimes, it takes a very different kind of magic and time. Time... They say that time mends all wounds. Sometimes, figuratively, is less than literally. But in this case, it's going to take just that. Despite her best attempts and what she's been exhausting up to this point, and the lack of clergy in the town, she's not lying. She's done the best that she can. The skin is, well, it's not in great shape. I'm not dead. Hushed whimpers begin to emanate from him in his unconscious state. You don't really know what kind of damage he's taken, but similarly, you can't also tell what did this to him. Outside of the game, sure, you know, but inside of the game. Yeah, no the idea. The skin looks ripped. It doesn't look as if it's been cut with a blade. It looks as if something tensely ripped the flesh as it exited the body. And that could be a number of things. Could again be the Earthbreaker. Could be that mall. Could be something entirely different. Either way, there are scar marks past the rippled and puckered flesh that has been charred at its opening. There are scars that decorate the left side going behind his body across the upper, middle, and right side of his body of what looks to be stipled lightning where it seems to almost 
twist and bend with this almost um, mechanical look to it. Everything is very hard edged as it rippled across the body, creating this almost bizarre like post stretch mark look. Whoa. Hell yeah, thunder scars. Um, I mean, with the energy I transferred though, would any of this show that it's mending at all? Like, would my divine energy be healing him in any sense? There, there needs to be more done than just transferring health. Remember, that's basically all you're doing is transferring health. So, no, it's it's not making it any better. You can't remove a scar unless you happen to use a different kind of magic. And as a divine creature, you have access to this kind of magic. It just depends if you want to spend it. Also, if you have it prepared. Uh, negative. Okay. All right. Um, this is the best thing being... you feel like you could probably do right now without really doing additional damage to yourself. Come on, let's yeah. Um, that being said, I will make my way out. Um, the people that are sick in the uh, in the infirmary, they're like they're still able to move and stuff for the most part, right? Like they can. As some of them can, can maybe. As far as you can tell. Thank you so much, Vine, for those uh, for those five subs. That gives uh, everybody another luck reroll. That's also my first luck reroll, which is good. I haven't had to use it yet because we are currently in a state of um, of recovery, if you will. Um, so far, it's been a, a Xander-only session. Um, Xander is Olheim, and um, he's trying to make some choices. He's got some decisions, and he's trying to discover exactly what's happened. And here he's found court. Mm, far, far past what looks he, like he should be dead. Personally, I think I'm in my prime. Yeah, that's debatable. Um, I think having just... negative 12 wisdom is a really high point for me. As he makes his way out, um, he kind of does a quick uh, observation. And then he kind of takes a quick step back and he starts moving um, like, the, like the tables and chairs to make like a pretty open space in the uh, infirmary area. And then as he starts placing his hands down, he starts uh, chanting and casting for 10 minutes and he creates a hero's feast in the, uh, in the infirmary for the uh, sick people in Genya as well. Okay. And this also has a capability of curing diseases. Okay. <clears throat> it's not a lot, but with the people that you have here, this should be more than enough to start somewhere with the sick. They begin moving, the ones that can move, and they start to walk over to the table. And Jenya stands forcibly in front of them. She puts up her arms, stopping them, and she looks to you. You're going to come back and do this every night then, right? If they need it, then yes. There are hundreds that are ill. As I said, if they need it, then yes. And if I allow them to eat now, this will spread, and if you do not come back, there will be many repercussions. If this is what the people need, then so be it. That's why I'm here, after all, to make sure they're safe. Then I look forward to seeing you every night, and I'll tell that the others, that the others can come this way. How many will this feed? Including yourself. I'll be fine. And others. You should probably partake of some as well. It'll help. I'll settle myself on what seems to be remaining. It's the others I'm worried about. I can take care of myself. They Ooh, cannot take sure. care of themselves. Very well. I can also be more hands-on with my spells as well to uh, cure some of them with the, the disease directly, but I need to prepare spells to do that. I can do that tomorrow when I come back. I need you to give me a 1d20 plus your caster level. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, that's going to be enough. Um, you will be able to... Give me three more. I think it's just for the entire roll, for the uh, actual, like, nectar itself. No. Not just the one roll for those people. It's per the target. I just cast, I just saw it, it's, it's per the target. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to make you roll ten, but I want three more. Okay, good. You're able to remove a lot of their issues at this point. You notice color returning to their cheeks. You notice the sweat starting to roll back um, as they sort of bat their brow. No more seems to fall. Their skin grows calm. Um, and they seem remotely lively, as lively as they can be at like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, underslept and exhausted. Though you've removed their exhaustion, they are still tired. So this is very, very helpful. Uh, again, if anybody's curious, this is Hero's Feast, and it summons an enormous table with divine food, enough to feed one creature completely per his level, or per his level of, of uh, was it Cleric? Or it's Cleric, right? Cleric, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be Castro, level, so yeah. So this will feed 11. Perfect. It looks good. It's as good as it's going to be in this situation. You manage to uh, to help them, and you happen to break through what it is that ails them. I'm going to put this on a clock. Clocks are important, and it's something that I'm adapting from Blades in the Dark. Again, I've explained this in the past, but essentially we create clocks to allow the players an opportunity to get over the situation. And this is a clock that will operate on success over time. He's going to need to be able to arrive pretty regularly. Also, while this stops the current rate of infection and or poison or disease of whatever is in them, whatever they are consuming from that is causing them to become ill, as Jenya has suggested, yeah, I'm it will make them ill again. That. So I'm going to put this uh, on a 16-piece on a timer, okay? Yeah. And I do want to make a note of that before... Um... I leave, seeing as, I would say, as one of the guys comes back to, uh, I would say two or three of them, seeing as that kind of color comes back to the face and stuff, um, kind of put my hands over the table and, and lean in. Jenya said that there's something you've been consuming that's been causing this sickness, illness. What food has come in recently to have caused this? between these these quite animalistic like chews right because they're, they're just loading their mouths with food at this point um they haven't had an appetite for days additionally they were just on the brink of death and you have managed to not only one feed them but remove their exhaustion their disease and cure them of of any additional ailments or what happens to be in their problem you're not doing anything mentally but they're just like shoving food in it's it's pretty disgusting to watch yeah um, but one of them sort of he covers his mouth. <clears throat> We're just getting from 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 Calder Lake. We're getting our water there. He shoves food in again, and <clears throat> works some things down. When wherever we can find food, we we eat it. Some well, um, they kind of pause for a minute and they sort of look at each other and. The girl, like one one of the women, she she shakes her head. She doesn't want to say anything. It's like she's trying to encourage him not to say anything. Please, I need to know what's going on. Yeah. Well, you won't think he's savages. There are people that need help. Well, we. And at this point, everybody is just finishing what's in their mouth. There's a lot of, like, heavy swallows at this point, and they're kind of working it down. And um, he says, with mud. Mud. There's nothing to eat. 
So the food stores. We, we mix fire. We mix grain with mud. And we bake it. We bake it over fire. And it makes something. So we're, we're, we're eating mud. And they just kind of solemnly just like lean back, realizing the implications of, of what they've said about how they've just sort of come to terms with the fact that everyone from the lower quarters is drinking from the area that everybody washes their clothes and rinses out their their yeah. chamber pots and they're taking that same water and they're mixing it with mud and what little bit of wheat that they can find and they're making the equivalent of like a mud cookie. Mm -hmm. Well, tonight that's different for you. And I can't promise everything will change in a day, but give me time. I know it's a lot to ask, but I'll try to bring life back to the city again. They nod, and then they immediately go back to to uh, to eating. It's 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 not that they're trying to just eat the food very quickly. At this point, they're swallowing their pride um, because they just admitted something incredibly. Um, I don't want to say revealing as much as it is that it makes them it makes them feel like less than. They realize they have they have sort of regressed back. They might be dressed, they might know how to speak, but they're literally eating dirt. Yeah. Um, Olheim picks up like one of the goblets from the uh, table and hands it to Jenya. Um, and he kind of starts walking towards the door and he points at her, eat something. I'll be back to, uh, tomorrow night. You step outside? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And, um, I'll make my way back over to, uh, the temple with the uh the pikes and stuff i okay. still need to get to the top floor all right uh i think here we're gonna take a brief break guys we're gonna do like uh three to five minutes so i can get some more water run to the bathroom uh others as well additionally go out and grab yourself some popcorn and stuff like that we're gonna run a little bit longer i've got a few more scenes that i want to run through um and still and still give allheim an opportunity to discover how he's going to figure this out so don't go too think far. you mean make him find the sledgehammer Yes, except I want to test if I can cleave three people without the feet. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. On that note, I'm making myself some popcorn, so might yeah, be a couple yeah. minutes. We'll uh, we'll be back in just a minute, guys. Like I said, see you then. Don't go too far. Um, and uh, yeah, all that jazz. See you soon.